welcome back to Next Generation. So today, since we are stuck indoors, still with this quarantine, so we're trying to find things to do indoors with stuff that we already have at home. We're running out of material too. I used to love our scrap wood pile and now it's like... Dwindling down. So today we're gonna show you guys some garden updates that we've done. We filmed the video on how we built our veggie bed, but a few things have changed. So we figured we would share it with you guys who may have seen that video, what worked, what didn't work and all that good stuff. Yeah, we did have to rearrange a couple of things, huh? I'm excited to show you guys because I'm excited. It, it was so satisfying to like rearrange. It's I think it's always satisfying when you rearrange stuff because not only does it usually look good and is better than what it was before, but it's something new. And for me, I like new things. It changes up the vibe and- We didn't have to buy anything extra. And that too. So it's new without being new. How awesome is that? I know. Just a forewarning before we start this video, we are in no way professionals. We know With basically what, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. We've done so much trial and error. We've, We've definitely- lost more plants than we've succeeded. <laughs> but we're coming around now, huh? But that's why we're sharing our information with you guys so you can know what works and what doesn't so you don't waste your time like we do. Yeah, we finally found some stuff that works. We're actually growing stuff now. Mm -hmm. Whereas last year, I don't think we were successful on anything but Everything like would start growing and then stop when it was like this tall. Now so. it's successful. So we're gonna show you what we've done. All right. All right guys, so here I am alone, obviously, because Jen is having a crazy allergy attack and she can't stop sniffling. So I excluded her from this part, but the time has come to announce our winner of the logo t-shirt and a $25 Visa gift card so that you can use it at any place that you like is April. Zacopolis, congratulations to you on winning and congratulations on hopefully closing out your first house coming up this next month. Very excited for you guys. Hope everything works out. I'm sure it will. We'll be praying for you guys and we'll be coming out with some videos because you had some great ideas. Plus, we want to help you come up with cool ideas for your new house. So congratulations to you and your boyfriend, husband, significant other, whatever you want to call them. If you claim them today, that's fine. If you don't claim them tomorrow, that's fine too. But thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. But we're really sorry for the people who did not win. Thank you so much for entering. We will be doing plenty more giveaways. So hit that subscribe button so that you can stay tuned on our upcoming giveaways. They're going to be very exciting. This is just the beginning. Stay tuned, subscribe. We'll see you next time. So the first biggest change that we made to our raised garden was moving it from one side to the other. Yeah, we relocated it. Basically where we put it to begin with or where we built it, we put it up against the fence just because it was the best way for like the flow of the backyard. Mm -hmm. But we didn't really think that the fence is gonna now block our sunlight. And if you wanna grow veggies successfully, they should get more sunlight. So we moved it over and I think it's only like three or four feet over, but now it gets direct sunlight. We also got to make it a lot longer than it was up against the fence. So we put some thought into it now. And cinder blocks are really inexpensive, so it doesn't add a lot of cost to extend your bed. Also, we were able to wrap it around our pond, which we have a yeah. DIY video on if you're interested. I like the way that came up. So tip number one, before you build your bed or add any veggies or plants, make sure you put it somewhere with a lot of sunlight. Choose a space in your backyard that has the most sunlight and then work around that space and try to have your bed there because we just liked it in the space where we originally put it and we stuck it there not thinking about sun or watering or any of those really important things that you need to grow yeah. things. Think about that. There's actually an app where you can measure the sun and you can see where it is in the summer and the winter because it does move. So keep that in mind that the sun could potentially move and then not hit your bed at all. So make sure that you're measuring it. I recommend Googling it, seeing what area would be best, like north, south, east, west. I yeah. know that has a lot to do with it and figure out what's the best place to put your bed. Don't just stick it somewhere because you want it there because that's what we did <laughs> because then you'll have no sunlight and, and then you'll, you'll have no plants. <laughs> so. All right. So we got grapes. Speaking of rushing into things, he bought a grape plant in the winter. <laughs> I think I bought the last grape 
plant that they were even selling at Lowe's <laughs> because I'm like, oh my god, they have grapes? Well, no sh The reason they only had one plant was because it's not season. Yeah. So I take this grape plant home, it had like three leaves on it, and I'm like, y'all, it's gonna start growing. And then we did some research and found out that it's the end of grape season. <laughs> So it says to cut it down. I was very upset. I bought a plant and then had to chop it off. And I had this one little like stick. All winter. And I, I told Jen, I was like, that's not right. Like you can't, you, you don't just cut a plant you just bought. Well, it was the greatest thing we ever did because guess what? It's bushing and thriving. Yes, it is growing like crazy. It's growing so fast that we have not had a trellis for it. And it was like an emergency this weekend that we added on a trellis because it's trying to grow onto everything. Yeah. So what did we do? We used what we had at home and we made a trellis for it. So how did we end up doing that? Where the old garden was, we just left the trellises on the wall or on the fence, and so they just stayed there for a while. We had no use for them. They were just random trellises on the fence. So, with the grape shoots trying to wrap around everything around the garden, I was like, all right, let's just reuse these and find a way to do it. So, Jen actually kind of laid it out and I just made it happen, like always. So, <laughs> that's what we did. I mean, I, I still have like a little bit of mounting to do to really strengthen up the structure on the top part, but it's gonna take at least a month for the grapes to start growing up and even put any weight up there. So I'm gonna hold off on that, but I definitely secured it into the ground. So it's pretty solid. We also spray painted it. So we already have spray paint at home and it was a little dingy looking. So we did a little refresh of spray paint. Where we wanted to move the grape, it was kind of just this random little space next to the cat house. And so, the pond, because we kind of want to yeah. close in our pond veggie garden area. What we did was we made like an L and we closed it in. So we took the two trellises and stuck them together and that's what I mean by I still need to secure it. We will have to train it a little bit because I woke up this morning, it was growing like crazy and it was already wrapped around some of the cat house bars. Which we just did it last night. So it's yeah. so crazy how fast it's growing. It's growing like two inches a day almost. It's insane. Nice. We're happy about it though. And it was this, it's so <laughs> awesome. If it keeps growing, we may extend the trellis. Over the Over pond. the pond, yeah. We'll just keep custom building. So basically this space, we just had a table there and it was just a useless space that got the best sun like of the entire backyard. It was completely worthless. Though. Yeah, like we woke up one morning, like why are we wasting this perfect space? It gets the best sun, it's right by our hose, so it's easy to water the plants there. So we've decided to transform this into another veggie garden. That's what we're about to do. So we first added some sacks, which these are just grow sacks that are a really inexpensive option. We already had them on hand. You can order them online and they're great for plants because it aerates the roots of your plant. Yeah, I really like them. The only thing is they don't look too pretty. <laughs> So we're gonna have these on the back of the space so that you don't see them as well. We can grow our tallest fruits and veggies back there. So like our tomatoes, some bell peppers, we're gonna grow in the sacks. And then in front of the sacks, we're gonna add a veggie bed so that we can grow some stuff raised up in the bed and then that can cover up the sacks so that you don't see them. I like that idea because like she said, the sacks are not the most beautiful, so I think that layout's gonna look really, really nice. Mm -hmm. It's gonna hide the sacks, but just a little tip, if you're not gonna do a full out bed and you wanna just have the sacks and kinda hide those, you could build a cheap pallet box and then set the sack inside of that and it would hide the look of the sack. Mm -hmm. It would look really nice, you could paint it. You can also hang some hanging baskets in the front. That's so if you wanna too. grow like strawberries or something like trailing rosemary that can like flow out, it would look really nice. Uh, we might be doing that, I love that idea. Or you can just buy a prefabricated bed or you can use cinder blocks like we already show you on our channel. So lots of options there on ways you can build your bed. You're gonna link all that in the description, right? Everything will be linked in the description. How we built our bed video Video, our pond video, all the videos that we mentioned, all the supplies we mentioned will be listed down below. So one issue that we've had with our original veggie bed is we've been trying to grow herbs in the little cinder block holes. And the problem with this is it limits how much it can grow. So we've noticed that we trim it and it grows, but it only grows a certain height. It only grows so bushy. We use a lot of herbs. So we're like, all right, what's the solution to this? How do we fix this? How do we get more space? Well, we found three beautiful concrete planters that we haven't even been using. They've just been in a corner, under the table, in the corner, <laughs> soaking up sun with no plants. We filled them up with, what all is it? All the herbs. Yeah, we filled them up with all the different herbs. That we use that we, frequently. Yeah, so 
all the herbs that basically have no herbs left in the little cinder block holes because we use them so often, we decided to double up those, put them into the concrete cinder blocks and let them grow crazy because we use herbs every day. It still works to plant your stuff around the edges of the cot of the cinder blocks like we did mm -hmm. in our original design. But if you use a lot of whatever you're growing, then it's not gonna be a great idea to plant them in the concrete because the hole is like this big. So yeah. the plant's not gonna get very big. So this works if you wanna use like edible flowers or just some decorative flowers around your bed or like some herbs that you may not use as often or herbs like green onions that don't need as much space, but rosemary, oregano, thyme, those are the three we use the most yeah. and they can get really big, but they're, like he said, limited in that really small space that they're in. So we still have some in the cinder blocks, but it grows like one piece at a time. We don't want to be held back. We like herbs. They make our food taste really good. Yeah. So why would we hold back? Let's just get more and find places to put them in the house. So those are all of the changes and additions that we've made since our veggie garden video. So the takeaway from this for you guys, if you're planning to do this at home and what we've done now since we are still transforming it and still adding on to it is to make a list of all the things that you want in your garden. Yeah, that's a great tip. And then plan around that. So if you want a bed of herbs, if you want a bed of veggies, if you want bell pepper, tomato, specific veggies that you want, figure out first of all how much space that you'll need so mm -hmm. that your bed you know will be big enough and you're not just building it for one vegetable. This is really important too, because we didn't follow those guidelines at first. We were like, oh my God, Plop, tomatoes need bed. two feet or whatever, whatever the herb might be. I don't even think that's true. But anyways, this herb needs two feet. Nah, we'll just put something one foot away next to it. You think planting more, you'll get more, but you screw yourself because yeah. when they're too close together, they won't get big. They don't fully grow. So they'll stop it. I guess you could call it a teenage year. <laughs> like they never grow to a full adult. So we you really don't know what we're talking about. No, but, obviously, but we're trying but here. from experience. Yeah, we, we can only, tell you. When we did that, that's when we ended up with the little baby bell pepper and the baby uh, jalapeno. Mm -hmm. And then this year we spread some things out. We have a huge cabbage head yeah, like this big the now. The biggest, that's the biggest thing we've ever grown. Mm -hmm. We're about to cut our cabbage. Sad but exciting moment because that's the biggest thing in the garden. Cabbage steaks for dinner. Please. <laughs> yeah. Bam. Wow, that thing's huge. So just make sure you're giving so your works. plants enough space. So just do a lot of research before, which is probably an obvious thing, but mm. we didn't do it. Or watch <laughs> our video and learn from all of our mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> so if you do wanna grow stuff that does get pretty large, you wanna make sure you're finding a wall that is suited for this. So like we mentioned, our tomatoes, this was a wasted space. The wall was wasted, so this is perfect to grow our tomatoes up and kind of break up the brick of that wall. Whereas where our veggie bed is now, there's a window there, there's the pond there, so there's really nowhere to grow things that get really tall. So that's why we say kind of really plan out everything, how large your plants are gonna get, how much sun they need, space, and you will get more success out of it. Really think about, if you're limited on space, think about the things you have around the house and do you use them because the space that we're putting all of our herbs and the tomatoes, we had a table there that we have not used in like three years. Just so happened to be a perfect corner for growing. Yeah, so we've decided we're gonna sell the table since we don't use it and grow herbs that we do use. So yes. Think, think outside about the box, basically. If you're looking at a space and it's completely cluttered, try to overlook the clutter and see if that's a good space where you should put a bed and then maybe you could move that clutter somewhere else, get rid of it. Now, like we mentioned, it's the perfect time to go through things, get rid of things. We yes. have a video on what to do while you're quarantined. Watch that. Gives you hmm. more ideas. So and Don't be a hoarder like us. Get rid of things if you don't use them. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> These were all of our tips, our ideas, our updates, and everything that we have learned along the way since our last veggie garden video. So I hope you guys liked it. I hope you learned something. I hope you go and make a grape trellis like me and are just as excited. And I really can't wait to pop a little grape off and eat it fresh. <laughs> That's my most exciting part, all right? I loved it when we did the blueberries. Also, we may actually mention our fertilizing situation because oh. it's amazing and that's honestly what gave us probably the most success not only moving everything to the sun 
and giving it the space it needs, but this really topped it all. Y'all, this, this tip we're getting ready to share with you guys, it's a game changer. It is. It really is. Let me just put it in perspective, okay? I had a pineapple plant for like seven years. Six years? Something like that. Six mm -hmm. years. It's supposed to grow after like two or three. It's supposed to start producing pineapples, right? Seven years, okay? Zero pineapples. We put this little tip trick into the soil. Now we have a pineapple. A pineapple started growing like three weeks later. It's we haven't crazy. gotten blueberries in two years. This it's season true. added the stuff. We have blueberries. Like an abundance, a whole bush full of blueberries. It's pretty crazy. You know those packs of blueberries you buy in the store? I can fill that up like twice with the amount of blueberries that we have. Just so, so you know. basically what we do, this will probably freak some of you guys out, but what it we do me is out. called worm composting or verma vermicomposting, worm tea, worm castings, lots of different names for it. But basically it's a compost system that has different layers. And one of those layers is filled with worms. And then the top layer is where you would put all of your food scraps, your compost to feed those worms. You do not have to touch them at all ever if you don't no. want to, but the bottom is where all the worm castings go. And there's a little spigot at the bottom where you can just empty out all the good stuff, the liquid gold into yeah, your- it's literally liquid gold. Into your watering can and then just water all of your plants with this. And I swear to you, all of your stuff's gonna grow amazing. It's like the best organic fertilizer mm -hmm. That's what I was just getting ready to say. they could ever use. So we highly recommend investing in some type of fertilization composting system so that you're giving all of your plants the nutrients that they need. And this has been the easiest for us. Y'all, when Jen came home and told me we were gonna be getting worm tea, I told her, I was like, I'm not drinking worm tea. <laughs> Like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. That's disgusting. And she damn near died laughing, okay? Because it's not It's not for the humans, all right? And for the plants. like Jen said, you don't have to touch the worms either. You dump it's them really, out of, of a bag. That's you true, it's not even that gross. But this is the best thing you can add to your garden. You can actually take- It is, take, I'm on board now. You can take like scoopfuls with your- um, Shovel. Shovel yeah. and put it directly into your garden, like scoop some of the worms in the stuff that they're living in, which you're casting. And you're supposed to do that every once in a while because it will become overflowed and the worms reproduce. So you eventually end up with no space to put your compost. So you have to actually scrape them out every once in a while. And then that, that out. That stuff is amazing in your garden, guys. Yeah. Like if you just mix it up with whatever dirt or soil or whatever you have, it's going to bring so much life to it. Bring crazy. so many worms and like good stuff into your soil, which the worms go in through your roots of your veggies. So it aerates your roots and gives them more space to grow. That. So you know when your soil just gets super compact, it's like thick, 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 compacted mm -hmm. soil. So the worms, since they're going through the dirt, mm -hmm. they're like loosening it up and making it not as compact. So there's so many different reasons on how this helps with your garden. So highly recommend this system. It's very easy to do and- Look, if you get a setup and you're growing plants and they won't produce, it's cause you need worm tea, I swear. We had this issue. Like we were successful growing plants from seeds but then they just wouldn't keep growing. And it's or they wouldn't produce the fruit or veggie. Or like that. it would grow the plant, but then we wouldn't get like the tomatoes on it or the blueberries on it. Yeah, we'd so have this big, we didn't understand. healthy plant that wouldn't produce. And it's because it took all the nutrients to build up that plant and then we weren't re- Fertilizing. Yeah, we weren't- Which this is yeah. an organic way. Yeah, what she said. So we weren't replenishing the nutrients and so it would just stop growing and then it would die. Mm -hmm. And we would never get any fruit or veggies. And then we'd give up and didn't understand why. Oh, which brings me to one last tip, guys. Ooh. Because this is another one that seems obvious, but was not to us. And I was mind blown when I found this out. When you go seed shopping, guys, buy good quality seeds or you will not get a plant. Okay? Oh, because that's... when we started the garden, we just bought a whole bunch of seeds from the dollar store while we were there because they were selling them and we were like, oh wow, look at all these seeds for 25 cents each, four packs Man, for a dollar. And we would get so many because we were in our experimental phase and this probably bit us in the ass the worst because <laughs> we got no success out of this at all whatsoever because the seeds were such crap seeds. So we started off thinking like, this is not gonna work out. Like we're not good at planting. We're not good at gardening. It was never successful. It, it was, was like not. good for microgreens. I didn't understand. Yeah, we would get little micros, which are really healthy if you don't know, and very easy to grow. 
but that's about all you would get from dollar store seeds. So, so we would plant it like and it. like our tomato plant would get this big <laughs> shot, and we did not understand why. <laughs> So I asked the girl that I work with, and that's what she told me was, what are the seeds that you're using? Low quality. Oh, dollar store seeds. And she died laughing. Like, that's exactly why. So make sure you're getting good quality seeds. We really like Botanical Interests, and rareseeds.com has the coolest things ever. I mean, hence the name, Rare Seeds. They have like black veggies. One thing Jen likes to do too that I've been having to get her to, I've been trying to tell her to stop doing, is she plants the whole bag of seeds. Yeah, so look up how to plant seeds properly. Don't just dump the bag <laughs> like Jen does. Cause one, if you're paying for good quality seeds, you don't want to waste them. They're all, almost all of them are guaranteed to sprout. And if not, that's why you plant two seeds per hole. And then you have to end up hole. thinning a lot more, which is- It's just a waste. The worst, so, I don't like thinning just plants. just a tip that we didn't know about until recently. Yes. So I kind of feel dumb, but- And thinning is you. really important. I guess we'll just add that in, just so you know. So yes. if you go to plant like a tomato plant, obviously you're only gonna need one. So if you sprinkle some seeds and like 10 little seeds start to sprout in one little area, you need to go trim nine of those and just keep one because if not, they're all gonna be competing to grow and they that don't was, have the space. So That was definitely an issue for us for a while. We yes. would literally just dump, even in those little cinder block holes, we'd dump a whole bag and it would be like this giant bush. It would look like grass. They'd all start growing and then all die. Yeah. And like what happened? Like yay, and then what the heck? It's Cause you only need one. So, so just do your research. All of this is gonna vary depending on what plants you do, herbs, whatever. Mm -hmm. So just do your research. Hopefully these tips kind of help you go in the right direction on things you need to be looking out for. And if you have any suggestions, definitely leave them down below in the comments. Oh yeah, I love clearly suggestions. Clearly we do not know very much. And anyone watching this obviously would like some advice too. That's why they clicked on this video. So leave advice for them too. So that's all for our tips and tricks on how to grow a successful herb garden. I hope you go out and build one yourself and then post those comments and tag us because I'd love to see your ideas, how you worked with your house or your space. I would love to see all of that. And the materials you use. And if you do it and you plant the seeds and you're successful with all the tips that we gave you, please provide us with updates. That's so cool to see your stuff grow. I mean, you watch ours grow. Why can't we watch yours grow too? <laughs> tag us on Instagram so that we can see it. We'll repost it so everybody else can see it as well. And we're always posting really cool stories in the garden and all around the house. So go yep. check those out. It'll inspire you. Yep. And we're adding to our front. So keep up with that Ooh. transformation as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye, Bye guys. guys.